How you doing? I hope you're doing well. You know, you should be proud of me. I haven't made a Spider-Man video in almost a year. Now I'm putting back on the mask one more time, probably not the last time, because I need to, want to, and have to. We all knew this was gonna be good, right? Like, I don't even know why you would watch a review, especially from the likes of me. Go see the damn movie if you haven't already. Go see it again, man. Shit, take me with you. You ever think about the multiversal you? Like you watching this video, what are you doing in a different dimension? Where did you go wrong or right? Who are you? Are we always at our core the same? Me? I'm definitely always a sellout deep in a bottle of self-pity masquerading as self-aggrandizing sorrow in every universe. <laughs> Anyways, you know those films that come out every once in a blue moon that everyone agrees are art? Like not just the hyperbolic, I'm gonna call this a masterpiece so that you click the video kind of art, but actual, without a shred of doubt, game-changing, genre-defining art art across the spider-verse is that it is that and so much more but before we get into it i have to make sure i don't get evicted and thank the sponsor of this video timu if you ain't heard of Timu by now, you're probably like me and living in a constant state of existential agony, but let me fill you in. Timu is an online marketplace that offers a variety of cool shit, affordable prices, and on top of that, there's always some coupons, some deals, some steals offering you extra savings. Right now, Timu is running a massive Father's Day sale, which is up to 90% off site-wide, plus a special offer for my subscribers. Download the Timu app by clicking the link in the description or use my code JOIN7693 and you can get $100 in coupons for free. Don't miss out on Timu special offer for a Switch OLED. It usually costs around $350 on other sites, but through the link below, you can get it for $299, and after applying that $100 coupon bundle, it only costs you $254. You can save almost $100, bucks, man. It's super easy to get caught up scrolling through thousands of products on the app, so I'll save you some time and share a few that I found. We got some Joy-Cons for those of you who don't want to break the bank. Spider-Man fan, you're in luck. This dope hoodie is $13 fucking bucks. Want an Insomniac Spidey Miles logo on your head in Instead, here you go. All right, fine. How about a TASM inspired web shooter so you can relive those childhood dreams? Site wide savings up to 90% off, free shipping and free returns up to 90 days. You can grab all those items and so many more by downloading the Timu app through my link in the description or using my code JOIN7693. You'll also receive a $100 coupon for free. Don't forget to enjoy my special offer and save almost $100 on that Switch OLED. Thanks, guys. Into the Spider-Verse, the first tale of Miles Morales was great, so great, a bunch of buzzwords and awards kind of great. Look at my guy Avi Arad wearing the Spider-Man hat, you can see him hatching, scheming, planning. Really Avi was in charge the entire time, Avi, Avi knows all, right? He thought Venom was the billion dollar answer, the awards contender. In that moment on the stage years ago, he realized the future lies in the Spider-Verse. Hence, No Way Home, the blockbuster impact, good or bad, that will continue to have. Of course, the Spider-Verse is what the people at the top took from that first film, without really understanding that it was not the Spider-Verse that made that movie special. It was the story that will never get old. That everlasting fable of a young kid whose heart is in the right place, forced to deal with the unimaginable responsibility, the unreal reasonable tragedy of growing up and trying to find your place in a world that seems so scary in its scale, so random in its reason. What I think makes Across the Spider-Verse one of, if not the best Spider-Man tale ever woven, is the fact that Miles fights against that in what genuinely might be the best plot conflict in a superhero movie. Miles wants to fight against the tragedy that defines Spider-Man. That isn't a new idea per se. Go back to the earliest of Spider-Man stories, swing through all your favorites, and that's the consistent thread, web. Whoever is wearing that mask wants nothing more than to give it all up if it means spending another moment with the one they love. But it is done so, 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 so well here. Every scene, every action beat, every line, every look of love and longing is so supportive in showing you that struggle that Miles is facing. Of course, as we always do, we want, need him to win, need him to be able to be happy, to get the girl to not be alone, to not lose another loved one. 
Even though destiny, canon, the reader, the viewer, me and you know that in the end, Spider-Man will always suffer, Ben will always die, Gwen will always fall, we will always love and lose and have the strength to do it all over again. But why? Why does it have to be that way? Because the universe tells you that? Because fate demands it? Miles isn't ready to face that, willing to believe that. Is Spider-Man a mantle worth the pain of that loss? Or is being Miles Morales enough? And that's so brilliant. Peter Parker always accepts the pain that comes his way. He finds a way to move through it, always. But we have never seen a Spider-Man who is told what's going to happen before it does, who is shown it, who has a chance to choose his own path out or through a tragedy that will inevitably define him. The mad geniuses behind these two movies dared to ask a question I can't believe has not been explored like this before. What if Spider-Man did not want to accept the grief that makes him Spider-Man? Jesus H. Peter B. Christ. Brilliant. Just brilliant. I love the fact that the first half hour is all about taking a pretty cool but fairly blank slate stand outside character from the first film and filling her with such an empathy and emotion. I seriously just wanted to keep following Gwen, see the entire story told or retold through her eyes. Just intelligent, bombastic, ballsy stuff that plays so well and works so well for getting you to care about her. Her as a character, as a person, not her as just Miles' crush. I was so, so worried that the group of interdimensional spider people would be portrayed as the cool guys, the good guys. I'm so happy that I was wrong. Kind of. This group of Spider-Men making sure death and loss fill every timeline, that the pain always continues so the universe won't end. That doesn't sound all that great, right? Cool visually and in concept, the secret society of string pulling web slingers are doing the difficult but necessary thing, self-sacrificing, always making the tough call. Righteous? Sure. But morally correct? I don't know. I don't think so. But maybe one life is worth the lives of billions. I'm not going to make that call, but they are. And that's so fascinating. If I saw the universe live through the Spider-Verse the way Miguel did, maybe I would understand his anger towards Miles, his hatred of an anomaly that did work out, an anomaly who might end up unalone. If we saw any of these spider people the way we get to see Miles, Gwen, and Peter, maybe I would feel the same for these antagonists as we do for our heroes. The Spot, who I remember like a wart, deeply from the animated series. Call me The Spot! The Spot! The Spot! <laughs> Spot. Is he a victim wanting to lash out for the hurt he experienced? If he was the main character, if we followed his pain, his emptiness, and saw Miles' original apathy to it, would we feel sympathy for him, root for him? A villain of the week has an entire life story that we aren't privy to. And that, to me, that use of perspective, that moral gray area is where the best stories come from. I said groundbreaking earlier, but the ground across the Spider-Verse shatters is not entirely fresh. Nothing here is an entirely new idea, but more importantly, everything here is explored with care, questioned and deconstructed with a nuance that feels so fresh. This is the best use of a superhero multiverse. It puts the rest to shame. Not because 500 spider people flood the frame and you get to catch a glimpse of your favorite childhood Spider-Man, but because the worlds we see and the voices that echo through them are all so uniquely real. We will all chuckle at a fun but forced fan cast when Doctor Strange confronts our childhood Xavier, but we will always remember the feel, the mood, the emotion that seared through the frame when Gwen Stacy's father, her dad, aimed a gun at her and she felt no choice but to leave her shattered purple world behind. We will clap seeing Michael Keaton back in action, but you'll always remember that the Spider-Verse made you believe that the pain you felt, feel, the loss you experienced, the change you went and are going through, 
is shared by so many that are like you, even if you can't see them. Beyond the style, beyond the Renaissance Da Vinci Vulture, the 90s emo Ben Riley, the overwhelming jaw-dropping amount of bold creative choices per second per frame, it's the humanity underneath that changes the game. The artistic expression is always in service of the emotion. Spider-Man has never connected with people because he can climb up walls, because he can swing through the skyscrapers, but because when Peter or Miles or Gwen or any soul decides to remove that mask, that mantle, what we see underneath is not just a face, but a mirror. That god-awful stupid debate that circles back every few months about Peter being Spider-Man and Miles being not. That shit has always been so fucking asinine, man. Spider-Man is a mantle, a gift, a burden, not a goddamn person. Peter isn't just Spider-Man, he's Peter. Miles isn't just Spider-Man, he's Miles. Media literacy must be deader than I thought because literally every single Spider-Man movie, comic show, game ever written tells you that the thing that makes Spider-Man special is the person inside. Miles Morales not being Peter Parker is what gives him the chance to break out of the scripted story he's told he must follow. It's what lets him choose his own fate or try to. Even among the multiverse of Spider-Men, women, and dinosaurs, Miles is still the oddity, the one that slipped through the cracks. We watch him learn that he can either take his own misplacement and let it consume him, become him, or he can use it, break the cycle of fate and the pain of a story he's supposed to be trapped in. Nothing is more powerful than watching this young kid thrust into a role he did not think he could handle and come to realize that being an anomaly, an unbelonging mishap in the canon, is his true power. Across the Spider-Verse is the most pro-art blockbuster I have seen, maybe, ever. Which is ironic, considering that the last few MCU Sonyverse Spider-Man films are pretty much the prime example of studio filmmaking being pro-consumerism at the cost of the artist. It's Dr. Michael Morbius. It's kind of hilarious how both these movies, which are made for significantly less money, embody the creativity and the character far greater than his recent live-action outings. But even that is an understatement. These two films have shown the world what comic book movies can, could have and should have always been. Films that are larger than life, not in spite of their intimacy, but because of their firm grasp on our collective humanity and our deep-rooted desire to make a difference. As you all know too damn well, no Spider-Man film will ever top my love of Sam Raimi's second swing. That movie made me want to be an artist, made me want to create. I would not be here talking to you about this character, these wall-crawling wallflowers, these slinging, swinging sunflowers without Spider-Man 2 dropping down from its web, biting into my soul, and showing me the beauty of creation. In every person, every artist's world dimension, there will always be that inciting piece of creation that sets them on their path. These will do that. I have no doubt that whether you're going into, across, or beyond the Spider-Verse, these two and probably three films will inspire an entire new generation to take a leap of faith to pursue their dreams, to be different, be an anomaly, to be themselves, to tell their story. And that means something more powerful than any one review, one video, one voice can say. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching the video. It's always fun to talk about Spider-Man, you know, finding new ways to do it since that's like kind of the start of my channel and uh, everything that I am was talking about Spider-Man. So it's always fun to step back into that. What did you think of the movie, man? I'm sure all of you love it, man. I I've never seen such a positive uh, response to a comic book thing before. Um, thank you so much again for watching the video. Uh, Jason's coming along great trailer very, 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 very soon. Thanks, guys. Bye.